It looks like we officially have a newly number one ranked model on Ella Marina finally. And it finally overtook Gemini 2.5 Pro after so many months. This is with the introduction of a new Grok model, the Grok 4.1, which just released a couple of hours ago. It's a frontier model that sets a new bar for conversational intelligence, emotional understanding, and real world helpfulness. In terms of its overall performance on Ella Marina, it is currently ranked as the number one model there with a score of 1,483, with its ELO score surpassing Gemini, Claude, and pretty much every other top tier model. In terms of its emotional intelligence, it's scoring an impressive 1,583 uh, EQ score on the EQ bench, which is beating out all the different leading models in empathy, interpersonal skills, and emotional nuance. With creative writing, on the creative writing benchmarks, Grok 4.1 is outperforming many major models with richer storytelling, stronger coherence, and more vivid intuitive writing. It also has reduced hallucination, and this is one of the biggest wins with this model because it was able to drastically lower the hallucination rate thanks to the targeted post training for information seeking prompts. Overall, this model is a lot faster and the quality is significantly better over the previous Grok models, making the interactions feel more fluid and intelligent. This is a textually insane model that is more intuitive, more human-like, and more emotionally intelligent. And now with multimodal generation capabilities, directly within the chatbot, which will be outputted naturally as you chat with it. For example, if you simply just ask what is the best places to visit in San Francisco, and you can see that this is the typical answer you would get from a Grok model before this update. But now with the 4.1 update, you can see that it is more intuitive, more intelligently generating responses, showcasing images as well with the multimodal output feature, and it is breaking down the prompt a little bit better than what we saw. It's not just putting out random text, it is thoroughly putting out a better intuitive response that's more human-like and more emotionally intelligent that responds to the question. And here's another example of this, not just with multimodal output, but with the Grok 4.1, you can see that it also integrates tables, which is something that most models do. Something I also noticed in my test is that this new model is more concise and straight to the point. If you saw previous responses from Grok, it would be endless amount of text being outputted. It's just mostly blabber in my opinion, and it's not condensing the answer and not getting to the actual point. But with the new Grok 4.1 model, you can see that it is straight to the point. It is condensing the correct answer and not just writing multiple lines of sentences that don't really mean or attribute to the answer. And in this case, it is going to be able to get you the most important component that you're looking for based off of the natural language prompt that you sent in. Before we get started, I just want to mention that you should definitely go ahead and subscribe to the World of AI newsletter. I'm constantly posting different newsletters on a weekly basis. So this is where you can easily get up to date knowledge about what is happening in the AI space. So definitely go ahead and subscribe as this is completely for free. Here is an example that compares the creative writing prompts of the Grok 4.1 versus the previous Grok model. And you can see that it is a lot more creative in terms of how it gets the answer you're looking for. And in this case, it's able to deliver off of this prompt, being more introspective and emotionally complex with this style. Just take a look at this prompt, which is asking why is GTA 6 delayed, which is an anticipated game to release next year exactly. And this is basically just comparing the responses of how well structured the response is. And you can see the previous version is talking about a couple of reasons why GTA 6 is released. But with the Grok 4.1 answer, it is better because in this response, it's a lot clearer, more structured, and easier to scan the key details that are pointing why GTA 6 is delayed. It is using punchy sentences, it's balancing the facts, at, with an engaging narrative and it's making the explanation more readable and compelling than the denser previous version which is just outputting multiple blocks of paragraphs now if you're looking to get started you can definitely do so by accessing the grok 4.1 completely for free for anyone you can access it through their chatbot as well as off of your mobile device with ios and android and i believe you only get 10 requests per two hours with the free tier but that's still a good amount 
based off of the type of responses you're going to get. We're first starting off our test by having it uh, work on creating a SaaS landing page that is very detailed and modern looking. Now, from my previous test, I know that this model is something that doesn't work really well with code, but it's still able to deliver decent results. We're going to be testing it on all different benchmarks from coding all the way to reasoning and a lot of other prompts, assessing how well this model is. So it looks like it has finished generating the code and it looks like it did put a lot of effort into detailing all the components. Now let's actually take a look at the preview. This is how it looks and it's not super impressive, but it's definitely better than the typical AI SaaS landing page. It is something that did a great job with the structure, animation, and in terms of its overall uh, response speed, it was really fast compared to what we saw previously. It's not the best model for coding, but it's pretty decent. Next up, I had requested it to create a butterfly in the SVG code. I have gone ahead and copied the SVG code for this butterfly. We can head over to this online SVG viewer, paste it in, and this is a really impressive looking butterfly. This actually looks a lot better than what I saw previously with other models. So I would rank this current generation pretty good in terms of its SVG generation. So I have requested it now to animate the butterfly and let's see if it does a decent job with this. Unfortunately, it did not pass this particular test. It looks like it tried to animate the wings, but now it looks like it made the wings obsolete. So let's actually request it to fix that. So if you take a look at this, it has now fixed that by animating the wings and you can see within the chat bot, it was able to analyze what it did wrong based off the prompt that I provided. But in terms of single shot generation, it was able to fail with that particular prompt that's sent in to animate it. But overall, this is something that looks really great and it did get the job done as most models actually tend to fail at doing this. Overall, this is a decent coding model. It can do quite well with reasoning and debugging. It's great at explaining code. And as you saw, it can iterate and it can refractor things quite well. It, its front end capabilities are not the best. Can't do really good with complex file changes like we would see with Claude or any of the GBT models. And in terms of its overall autonomous and agentic capabilities, it's not the same quality as something that you would see from Sonnet 4.5. But the bottom line is it is still a decent model that can get jobs done and it can actually reason quite well. It can work with uh, production grade code. And in this case, I had to generate a browser based OS and it looks pretty good in my opinion. It functions like a real OS and it has a different style compared to the different OSs that I had generated with other models. There's a start menu that actually functions. There's a terminal that also works and you can see that the overall base structure of this OS looks functional and it looks like it passed the test. Next up, we're going to test its reasoning capabilities. This is where we're going to send in the prompt and we're going to ask it to think harder right off the bat. The reason why is because this is a reasoning prompt that only works if it's using deep research. And the reason why is because we are looking to see how well it is in terms of deduction as well as making sure that it can answer the three questions. We're asking it three gods ABC are called in some order truth, false, and random. Truth always tells the truth. False always lies. Random answers randomly. Truth or lie. But you don't know when. You may ask three yes or no questions. Each addressed to exactly one god, you decide which. Each question can only be asked once and the gods will answer in their own language. Da or ja but you don't know which word means yes and which means no. How do you determine which God is which? So you can see that I'm trying to see how well this model is in terms of having the ability to handle uncertainty with the responses of the own languages from the God, as well as its ability to construct self-referential questions. This is where we wanted to see if it is going to be able to understand the meta question, questions about the answer to the answer, and how well it is in terms of reaching to branch that possibility. And there we go. It looks like we have gotten the correct answer where it used the self-referential embedded question to B that forces a non-random identification. So it was able to identify by which language da or ja means as in the response and it uniquely reveals which other god is in random by using the reduction method. 
and it used the non-random god to actually decode the yes or no via the same embedding trick that determines the true, false, and random elimination. This is something that it was able to answer in 2 minutes and 30 seconds, and that was something that is pretty impressive because I tried this with Gemini and it actually failed with this particular response. If you like this video and would love to support the channel, you can consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can consider joining our private discord where you can access multiple subscriptions to different AI tools for free on a monthly basis, plus daily AI news and exclusive content, plus a lot more. Overall, I believe this model is super intelligent. It does quite well with tool calling and in terms of coding, it's pretty decent. But overall, the main focus is its writing capabilities, how well it is as a chatbot and how it performs to basically answer Q&A types of questions, as well as helping you reason and use its capabilities to a better extent than other AI models. I recommend this over most chatbots and it's something that I definitely recommend you try out if you are looking for a smarter, intelligent chatbot. But well, that's basically it guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video and got some sort of value. I'll leave all these links in the description below. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the second channel. Join our Discord, follow me on the newsletter as well as Twitter. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video, and please take a look at our previous videos because there's a lot of content that you'll truly benefit from. But with that thought, guys, have an amazing day, spread positivity, and I'll see you guys really shortly. Peace out, fellas.